measure. It was just the first step for the Russian scientist Stokowski. But who would have known that it was a giant leap for mankind? Now, can anyone here guess what year space exploration was first introduced? No need to raise your hand, just shout out the answer. Close. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing that was too hard of a question. Let's make the question easier. What was the first instrument launched into space or device?
It is about charting a new course of evolution for humanity. 200 years ago, we dreamed of lighting huge rings of fire in the Sahara Desert and also placing huge mirrors reflecting sunlight all the way to Mars to get our message across space. But if you want to get your message across an ocean of space, bonfires and reflected sunlight are pretty much useless. You need a form of light you can't even see. Radio waves are ideal for spreading information long distances because they travel more freely through interstellar gas and dust. Now, how can this help us? SEDI, the Institute for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, has searched the entire sky for these radio signals to help us find alien life. But unfortunately, after six decades of searching, nothing. But our hope doesn't end there. In 2015, astronomers watched as this normal seeming star started to dim in erratic waves, sort of like a Morse code. The cause, you ask? It totally might just be an interstellar gas cloud or a shattered moon blocking the light. But it has the hallmarks of something entirely different an alien megastructure. This hints at a new way for us to be looking for advanced life in the universe. Not looking for signals, but looking for directly their technology. Not searching for messengers, but searching for engineers. Now, you must be thinking, what mind-boggling alien technology should we be looking for? The Kardashev scale divides civilizations in the universe into three types. Type 1 civilizations will have mastery of their own planet, gaining total control of it. Type 2 will have gained control of their entire solar system. And Type 3 will have gained control of their entire galaxy, making them the masters of the universe. Now, when looking for civilizations across any advanced life, will produce a certain amount of heat energy, waste heat, because of the amount of resources they use. And this waste heat can pose a serious threat to them, threat to them just like climate change does, does, like I was mentioning earlier. But it also points a new way for us to look for them. We can scan the sky for radiating, radiating waste heat, and this can be a sign of alien activity. But if they're not already exterminated by their own technology, they will gain control of their home planet and reach a type 1 civilization. They can gain access to all its resources, energy, and I'm talking to the core. And even control the climate and weather. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Then we won't be complaining for such human weather. But the thirst to become even greater will lead them to need more than just resources. They need staggering amounts of energy. So they build megastructures mini such as Dyson spheres, which are designed to capture a star's entire solar energy. And once civilizations manage to do this, they will reach a type 2 civilization. And these megastructures can also cause the blowout of the star's energy, as you can see. And eventually, as they grow and grow and develop in their technology, they will reach a type 3 civilization. Because to extend their existence across the galaxy, they leave us this. And so maybe because of these megastructures, type 3 civilizations that are built upon billions and billions of Dyson spheres and can create stars at will, they can also cause an entire galaxy to go dark. So maybe we're the ones at fault here. Maybe we're, we should be looking for, for what's not there. Huge voids in space, which have no trace of light, could be sign of advanced life. But if civilizations this advanced are out there, maybe they have just chosen to stay invisible. But what happens if the ancient dream becomes reality and we do make contact? Our view 
view of ourselves will profoundly change because for the first time, we would feel a sense of cosmic brotherhood. And studying their technology will lead us to making huge advancements of our own, ensuring our long-term sustainability, all because of space exploration. But what happens if, after all our searching, we never make contact? For social creatures like humans, it is a curse to look up into the lonely sky because we are newcomers to the cosmic stage looking for connection and guidance. But it would mean that our place in the universe is truly unique, and it would give us the responsibility to keep the flame of intelligence alive. And also to become what we're looking for, the masters of the universe. So, I hope that whenever you all leave this call today and you look up into the sky, you realize that the sky is not a limit, but it's an opportunity for us to leave a signature for the leap of mankind. Thank you.